In today's world, the embodiment of military might is the American aircraft carrier. These monoliths personify the essence of power and technical achievement. The weapons they've carried over the years have always been at the edge of industrial and scientific achievement, and many of the planes used have become icons of aeronautic history. However, the planes that perform protection and surveillance duties for these symbols of conflict seldom gain public notoriety. In this episode of Flying Through Time, we'll be looking at a number of these designs. The aircraft carrier came to prove itself during the Second World War, when the outcome of the conflict was decided by the fact that the U.S. carriers were not in Pearl Harbor during the Japanese offensive strike on the Hawaiian Islands. Had the American carriers been lost or even severely damaged during these raids, it's likely that the Imperial Japanese forces would have achieved a stranglehold over the entire Pacific arena, and the U.S. may have had to fight a very different war perhaps on their home soil. Arguments continue today that had the combined Allied forces been forced to fight on the two major fronts of mainland Europe and the domestic soil of the US, the outcome of the period may have been significantly different. The development over the years in supplying aircraft and weapons for aircraft carriers has shown many advancements in technology. The peak of propeller fighter and attack aircraft came with Vought's F-4U Corsair and the Douglas AD-1 Skyraider. The planes were used not only in defense of the fleet, but also in offensive roles against other naval combatants. Later, the role of close air support of ground troops and precision attack of the opposition ground-based facilities and services proved to be an excellent venture. With the carrier's further development, these planes became the determining blow in naval combat. By the end of the Pacific War, the startling statistics of Japanese ships lost in action were telling. Of the 39 battleships and cruisers lost, Four were sunk by opposition ships, eight by submarines, and an incredible 27 by air attack. The Allied aircraft carrier and its planes had become a very important weapon in the U.S. inventory. The dawning of the jet age and the steam-powered catapult saw many new ventures onto the carrier deck. The most notable were the Crusader from Vought the A4D Skyhawk by Douglas and the Corsair II, also from Vought in the attack role. The Corsairs in particular went on into service with the Marines as well and became well celebrated in the air of Vietnam. Meanwhile, the Navy's jet fighter development came to the fore with McDonnell's F4 Phantom. The plane, which was first delivered in 1958, saw many appearances in various conflicts. Remarkably, though the last F-4 rolled out of the factory in 1979, today it's being considered for new roles after maintenance and upgrading by the European Aeronautic Defence and Space Company. This plane is still providing service, though little of the original 50-year-old design remains unchanged. A6 Intruder was conceived as a carrier-based low-level attack bomber equipped specifically to deliver nuclear or conventional weapons on targets completely obscured by weather or darkness. The Intruder possessed outstanding range and endurance and carried a heavier and more varied load of stores than any previous US naval attack aircraft. The first A6A entered carrier service in 1963 and December of 1996 saw the last launch of an A6E intruder from the aircraft carrier USS Enterprise, a period of over 30 years and many conflicts. Perhaps the most identifiable naval jet fighter is the F-14 Tomcat. 
The plane, first delivered in 1972, became the mainstay of the carrier strike force. With its variable wing geometry and diverse payload capabilities, it was top gun for an extensive period. However, the Tomcat is now in its final years of Navy service, being pressed into the reconnaissance and Bombcat strike roles. During this period, the attack role was taken up by the FA-18 Hornet from Boeing and McDonnell Douglas. The Tomcat's replacement will probably be the new F-18F Super Hornet, a longer, twin-seat version of the existing Hornets. The FA-18 Hornet had originally been ordered as a dual-role fighter and attack aircraft, intended to replace the Vought A7 Corsair II, the A6 Intruder and the McDonnell F-4 Phantom in Navy service, and to augment the significantly more costly Grumman F-14 Tomcat. The first operational cruise by Navy Hornet squadrons took place in February-August 1985, deploying aboard the USS Constellation. Today, the Hornet and the aging F-14 are the current fighter and attack aircraft on most U.S. carriers. The attack Tomcat, or Bombcat, is being used in the gap between the phase-out of the A-6 Intruder and the arrival of the Super Hornet. All the while this attack and fighter development was happening, a protective umbrella was spread and maintained over the carriers by anti-submarine and surveillance aircraft. These planes provided the safety and detection blanket needed for the carrier groups to carry out the required missions. Prior to the attack on Pearl Harbor, PBY Catalina aircraft began experimentation with magnetic anomaly detection. Meanwhile, in February 1943, a letter of intent was sent to the Lockheed Vega Airplane Division for the development of two XP-2V-1 patrol planes. This would be the initial development of the U.S. Navy's patrol plane workhorse through the early 1960s, the Lockheed P-2V Neptune. As the United States entered the Cold War period, air anti-submarine warfare advancements continued as the Martin SP-5B Marlin seaplane, the Lockheed P-2V Neptune and the Grumman S-2F Tracker began searching for Soviet submarines. In May 1969, the P-3C Orion aircraft was unveiled at Lockheed. As the P-3 Orion aircraft continued to enter the fleet, older ASW aircraft began to be phased out. Additionally, the Navy Air Systems Command initiated a contract with Lockheed in August 1969 to develop the S-3 Viking to replace the aging Grumman S-2 Tracker. In July 1970, the P-3C Orion began its first operational deployment from Keflavik, Iceland. The advancements of the P-3C included the processing of directional sonar buoys as well as an onboard computer system. While not a carrier-based plane, the Orion has become the main marine surveillance platform in use today. In November 1971, the first S-3A Viking was completed by Lockheed and in January 1972 accomplished its inaugural flight. The S-3A Viking would double the speed and range of its predecessor as well as tripling the search area capability. It began acceptance trials in October 1973 and was officially introduced into the fleet in February 1974. In 1985, the improved version of the Viking, the S-3B, was flown. It would include extensively improved acoustic and non-acoustic sensors, as well as outfitting for the Harpoon missile. Today, the S-3B Viking is an all-weather, carrier-based jet aircraft, providing protection against hostile surface combatants, whilst also functioning as the carrier battle group's primary overhead mission tanker. Extremely versatile, the aircraft is equipped for many missions, including day-night surveillance, electronic countermeasures, command control communications warfare, and search and rescue. To engage and destroy targets, 
the S-3B Viking employs an impressive array of airborne weaponry, including the AGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missile and a wide selection of conventional bombs and torpedoes. Derived from the S-3A and formally configured for anti-submarine warfare, the current S-3B has evolved into a premier surveillance and precision targeting platform for the Navy, along with modern precision-guided missile capabilities. Future Viking aircraft will also have a control capability for the AGM-84 standoff land attack missile. The S-3B provides the fleet with a very effective fixed-wing over-the-horizon aircraft to combat the significant and varied threats presented by modern maritime combatants. The continuous improvements in early airborne radars by 1956 led to the concept of an airborne early warning and command and control aircraft. The first aircraft to perform this mission was the Grumman E-1 Tracer, a variant of the S-2 Tracker anti-submarine aircraft, which saw service from 1954 to 1964. The E-2 Hawkeye was the first carrier-based aircraft designed from the outset for the all-weather airborne early warning and command and control mission. Since replacing the E-1 in 1964, the Hawkeye has been the eyes of the fleet. Additional missions include surface surveillance coordination, strike and interceptor control, search and rescue guidance, and communications relay. It's a high-wing aircraft with stacked antenna elements contained in a 24-foot rotating dome above the fuselage. The peculiar airflow over and around the radar dome led to its unusual multiple surface tail unit. Since its combat debut during the Vietnam conflict, the E-2 has served the Navy around the world. The current version of the Hawkeye became operational in 1973, having undergone several upgrades to its active and passive sensors, engines and propellers. The newest variant of the E-2C with its new mission computer, improved radar displays and cooperative engagement capability combined with the shipboard Aegis weapon system now forms the cornerstone of all future sea-based theater ballistic missile defense. The British counterpart of the Lockheed's Orion is the Nimrod, which entered service in 1969. Based on the Comet 4, the Nimrod was and remains the only jet-powered long-range maritime patrol aircraft in military service, offering the advantages of speed and height in transit, while still capable of long on-task periods and, in particular, stealth in the anti-submarine warfare role. As most propeller-engined maritime patrol aircraft make a discreet resonance that is easily detectable by submerged submarines, the Nimrod, with jet engines and associated jet noise, is virtually undetectable. In the early 1980s, the aircraft was upgraded to MR2 standard, while the flight deck and general systems remained the same, apart from the later addition of an air-to-air -air refueling probe as a result of the 1982 Falklands conflict. While still resembling the DH Comet from which it was derived, the long fuselage with the cockpit built into the steeply raked nose houses the long-range search radar. The fuselage tail cone extends well beyond the fin and rudder to house a magnetic anomaly detector unit. The low-set wings are slightly swept on the forward edge. Four turbofans are buried in the inboard section of the wings. Bullet-shaped wing fairings project from the leading edges towards the wingtips. The Nimrod bomb bay carries the Stingray torpedo and the Harpoon missile for the anti-surface unit warfare role. For search and rescue, the aircraft has a selection of air-deliverable multi-seat dinghies and survival packs. Internally, the aircraft can carry around 150 sonar buoys of several different types, both active and passive, 
These are deliverable via two unpressurized six-boy rotary launchers and two pressurized single-shot launchers. Although the Nimrod MR2 airframe is aging, it still remains a potent and respected maritime patrol aircraft. It served with distinction in the Falklands conflict, the Gulf War, and in support of the maritime blockade of the Balkans during the Bosnia crisis. The Nimrod MR2 will continue in service until all squadrons will have been re-equipped with the Nimrod MRA4. The Lockheed P-3C Orion is a peerless airborne hunter. Its reputation as the ultimate submarine finder was achieved through more than 35 years of service, from the Cuban Missile Crisis to the round-the-clock low-profile patrols throughout the Cold War. Today, the P-3 is still very busy, remarkably well adapted for maritime patrol in the post-Cold War world. The P-3 can be outfitted with a variety of sophisticated detection equipment. Infrared and long-range electro-optical cameras plus special imaging radar allow it to monitor activity from a comfortable distance. It can stay aloft for extremely long periods and its four powerful Allison T-56A-14 engines can fly at almost any altitude. In addition to sub-hunting, the P-3 is now called upon for peacekeeping and relief missions around the world. The P-3 Orion land-based maritime patrol and anti-submarine warfare aircraft is operational in the air forces of 10 countries. More than 700 P-3 aircraft have been built by Lockheed Martin. The P-3A was first operational in the U.S. Navy in 1962. P-3C first entered service in 1969 and has been continuously upgraded and updated with new avionics systems and mission equipment. In 1975, an improved navigation system, expanded computer memory and tactical displays were provided. In 1976, an infrared detection system and sonar boy reference system were added and the aircraft were fitted with the Harpoon missile. The P-3C aircraft in 1984 were equipped with advanced anti-submarine warfare avionics including the IBM Proteus acoustic processors. During the 1990s improvements, mainly directed towards the provision of advanced signal processing capabilities, the Orions were implemented to meet the threat of new generation fast, quiet and deep diving submarines. November 2003 saw international upgrades include new electronic support measures, radar and acoustic sensors, new data management system and a new communication suite. The aircraft is flown by a crew of 10 on missions up to 14 hours long. The flight deck accommodates the pilot, the co-pilot and the flight engineer. The main cabin is configured as a mission operations room for the tactical coordinator, the navigator and communications operator. The P-3C has advanced submarine detection sensors such as directional frequency and ranging sonar buoys and magnetic anomaly detection equipment. The avionics system is integrated by a general purpose digital computer that supports all of the tactical displays and monitors and automatically launches ordnance and provides flight information to the pilots. In addition, the system coordinates navigation information and accepts sensor data inputs for tactical display and storage. The P-3C can carry a mixed payload of weapons internally and on-wing pylons. The airborne electronic surveillance receiver is carried on a pylon under the wing fairing. The system automatically operates in search mode, its target primarily being submarine radars. The aircraft can carry weapons in the bomb bay and on 10 underwing pylons. The bomb bay is in the underside of the fuselage forward of the wing. 
It's capable of carrying a 2,000 pound mine or alternative ordnance including 1,000 pound mines, depth bombs, torpedoes or nuclear depth bombs. The underwing pylons can carry 2,000 pound mines, torpedoes, rockets, rocket pods and 500 pound mines. The US Navy P-3C aircraft are equipped to carry the Harpoon AGM-84 anti-ship and standoff land attack missile. The aircraft is equipped with four Allison T-56A14 turboprop engines. Each engine drives a four-blade constant speed propeller supplied by Hamilton Standard. Once the search area has been reached, the crew usually shut off two of the four engines to extend the mission. The five fuel tanks, one in the fuselage and four integral wing tanks with a total fuel capacity of 8,900 gallons provide range for up to 14 hours flying time. The P-3C still remains the most up-to-date version of the P-3 Orion. A successor aircraft from Lockheed was planned during the early 1980s which would have been designated the P-7. However, a lack of funding for this project caused it to be cancelled in 1989. Thus, the P-3 Orion will probably continue as the US Navy's premier anti-submarine warfare and maritime patrol aircraft through the first decades of the 21st century. To this end, Lockheed are currently assessing the fatigue life and damage tolerance characteristics of the P-3C airframe, identifying any structural modifications required in an effort to attain the 2015 service life goal the Navy has requested. With capabilities like these, it's no wonder that somewhere above the earth during peace or conflict, there's nearly always an Orion, serving as an eye in the sky. This concludes this episode and this series of Flying Through Time. We hope you've enjoyed the aeroplanes and the stories as we cast our eyes over the ever-broadening realm of flight.